a high-profile CEO facing trial in Japan has escaped to Lebanon, and Japan learned about it on the news. Hi there, I'm Jeff. JR is the producer, and this is episode 224 of Plain English, your recipe for success, the best podcast for practicing your English. You can find all the resources that go along with this episode at plainenglish.com slash 224. On today's episode, Carlos Ghosn, the former CEO of the car makers Nissan and Renault, has escaped from Japan where he was supposed to face trial for white collar crimes. In the second half of the episode, we'll talk about the English phrase to take a hit, and we have a quote of the week from Carlos Ghosn himself. Before we start, though, I wanted to ask you to take a moment to join our email list if you're not already on it. As a special thank you, JR and I will send you our best tips for practicing English online, and we'll give you the opportunity to tell us more about yourself. That's all in addition to the episode emails, which include extra free resources that we can't fit into the episode. So come join us by visiting plainenglish.com slash mail, plainenglish.com slash M-A-I-L. Carlos Ghosn, the former CEO of car makers Nissan and Renault, staged a dramatic escape from Japan where he was being held in advance of a trial for white-collar crimes. His passports had been confiscated, and he was prohibited from leaving the country. His attorney says that he's baffled by what happened. Now, the Japanese government, deeply embarrassed, faces the collapse of a high-profile trial of a vilified business executive. Japanese authorities learned about his escape on the news. Gon might not be a master criminal, but he is a master strategist. As boss of Nissan and Renault, he ran a sprawling global empire with offices and factories around the world. Nissan, a Japanese corporate champion, was on the verge of bankruptcy in the 1990s until Ghosn engineered its turnaround. He was a celebrity in the Japanese business community and was even once featured in a comic series. Then, he was arrested in 2018 for misappropriating company funds and under-reporting his income to regulators and tax authorities. His reputation in Japan took a hit. He had pledged to defend himself in court, but the trial kept getting delayed. A hearing on Christmas Day further pushed his trial date into the future, and that's when he decided to go to Plan B. Plan B was escape from Japan. It was a daring, high-risk maneuver, but he appeared to plan it carefully. It's not immediately clear how he escaped. Some initial reports said he sneaked out in a box used for storing audio equipment, but other officials denied that was the case. However, he does appear to have flown out of the country 
on a private plane, which flew through Istanbul before going onward to Lebanon. Officials in Turkey have arrested pilots and others that they suspect of having been involved, and they accuse them of human trafficking. Why Lebanon? Though born in Brazil, Gon spent his childhood in Lebanon and remains something of a hometown hero there. He is a Lebanese citizen. His face was once on a postage stamp, and people there appreciate that he has been an unofficial ambassador to the small country around the world. After news of his escape spread, billboards went up in Beirut, the capital, showing his face above the words, We are all Carlos Ghosn. Ghosn says that he wasn't fleeing justice, but that he was fleeing injustice. Though the Japanese will see it differently, he has a point. In the Japanese justice system, 99% of defendants who are indicted are convicted of their crimes. He says he was framed by backstabbing Nissan employees who resented his management style and feared that he would have engineered a merger with another company. He said he could not have gotten a fair trial in Japan. Well, now his trial will likely not take place. The most recent timeline had it starting in April 2020, but Lebanon has no extradition treaty with Japan, meaning that he won't be sent back there to face trial. The Lebanese government says he is in the country legally, having presented a French passport. The Lebanese foreign minister expressed support for him. Could he be tried for the same crimes in Lebanon? It's possible, but unlikely. The entire case has been built in Japan and was built for the Japanese justice system. It seems highly unlikely that Japan would surrender the evidence and the entire case to a different country's justice system, even if prosecutors in Lebanon wanted to put him on trial. Does that mean the executive is safe in Lebanon? Not exactly. As boss of Nissan, he traveled to Israel on business. Israel and Lebanon have officially been in a state of war for 60 years, and citizens of Lebanon are prohibited from traveling to Israel. The penalty for that is 15 years in a Lebanese jail. Whoa, uh, I'd love to hear what people are saying about this in Japan. I can't read the Japanese news or really get the Japanese perspective except through American or British reporting. So for those of you in Japan who follow this, leave a comment below this episode at plainenglish.com slash 224 and let me know what people are saying about this over there. Wow. Time to say hi to a few listeners. Let's say hello to some Japanese listeners today. Momoko from Tokyo is listening. She is a nurse in a veterinary clinic, and she likes karaoke in her spare time. Also, Sho is a university student in Tokyo as well, and he says his English test scores have improved since he started listening to plain English. So, Sho, 
Congratulations on all your hard work, and thanks to you and Momoko for being a huge part of Plain English. The expression we are going to talk about today is to take a hit. What does it mean to take a hit? It means to be affected badly by something, and it's very, very common to say that someone's reputation took a hit when that person's reputation is damaged. Earlier in the episode, you heard that Carlos Ghosn's reputation took a hit in Japan after he was accused of underreporting his income and using Nissan company assets for his personal benefit. Without commenting on whether any of that is true, it is definitely true that his reputation in Japan took a hit. His reputation, the way people see him, suffered. Who else has seen their reputation take a hit? Right around the same time that Gon was being arrested, we were living through the Me Too movement, and many people in the entertainment industry saw their reputations take a hit. For some of them, their reputations took a serious hit. That's what you say when someone's reputation is very badly damaged. That person's reputation took a serious hit. That's one common way to use it when you're talking about a person whose reputation has been badly damaged. But you can also talk about an enterprise like a business or an entire industry taking a hit. After a recent conflict in the Middle East, stocks in the United States took a hit. That means stock prices fell after disturbing news came to light. If an entire industry suffers from some external event, you can say that industry has taken a hit. It's been a few years, but every so often the U.S. state of Florida suffers from a bad hurricane season. In those years, you see pictures of beachfront properties badly damaged, water everywhere, hotels closed for renovations. When that happens, you'd say that the tourism industry in Florida has taken a hit from a bad hurricane season. The whole industry suffered from that one event or one trend. The whole industry had lower sales. The U.S., Canada, and Mexico have a new trade agreement, and the three countries have a deeply integrated auto manufacturing industry, cars. Parts and supplies go back and forth over borders, and any changes in trade agreements or tariffs or rules can affect car makers. Analysts now think automakers will take a big hit from the new trade agreement, which is expected to increase labor costs in Mexico and increase duties and tariffs on parts moving across borders. The auto industry is expected to take a big hit from that. In this case, the hit isn't lower sales, but higher costs. So once more, to take a hit is to suffer badly. And we often say that a person's reputation has taken a hit 
or that a business, industry, or enterprise takes a hit if it suffers from some external event. Here's our quote of the week. It's from Carlos Ghosn himself. Here's what he once said, and you tell me if his recent actions are consistent with this belief. Here it is. You'll never convince me there is a hopeless situation where there is any finality in any success or any failure. Say what you like about what he did. You can agree with it, disagree with it, but he staged an escape from Japan where he was being held for trial. As we learned at the end, he's not totally out of the woods yet, but the man lived up to his quote. He certainly didn't think that the situation was hopeless. So here, once more, is the quote, which may shed light on the businessman's mindset as he planned his escape. You'll never convince me there is a hopeless situation where there is any finality in any success or any failure. That's all for today. Coming up on Thursday, I couldn't resist this story the father of preventative medicine. You know preventative medicine. The idea is you take some steps today and you hopefully don't get a terrible disease later. Well, the father of preventative medicine recently turned 100 and is still working. It's a great story, lighthearted, but a good one, and that is coming up on Thursday. Make sure to join us then. And if you're not yet a member of Plain English Plus, this is your opportunity. It's the beginning of the year. We're thinking about our goals, and you might be thinking this is the year to invest a little bit in English, to really commit to improving your listening, your speaking, your writing. If that sounds like you, then I would really love to have you as a member of Plain English Plus. To learn more about it, please come visit us at plainenglish.com slash plus, plainenglish.com slash P-L-U-S.